So the, the major corroborative findings means that are there studies on this? Are there a few studies or many studies? And I'm saying there are many studies now that look at these high protein diets. And we know that low carb diets contribute to many early deaths. And with, with people on keto diets, 28% more likely to die from any cause. And higher intake of plant proteins like nuts and legumes had the strongest association with enhancement in lifespan. That's a shocker. Many people would have predicted that higher amounts of animal protein lead to shorter lifespans, but I don't think many people would have predicted higher intake of plant proteins like beans and nuts make you live longer. So this was a dose response relationship. And let's look at that show. More animal protein means more death, early premature death, and more plant protein means longer lifespan. Let's look at a few of these studies. Here's four of these studies done by different investigative researchers representing, by the way, hundreds of researchers putting their life's work into looking at this data for decades. These studies go on for decades, looking at many deaths. Here's four more studies. Here's, so here's the first four, here's second four, different, done at different years, all showing, these are more recent studies, all showing the same thing, that low carbohydrate diets are dangerous, keto diets are dangerous, carnivore diets are deadly, and plant diets are beneficial but they come more, become more beneficial and more lifespan enhancing. When you do pay a protein, pay attention to the protein availability of the whole plant foods. And that means not eating a diet of all fruit and not eating a diet with white rice and not eating a diet of all potato and not eating, in other words, have enough variety in your diet. The variety to include vegetables, whole grains, beans and nuts and seeds and some fruit because you want to have all these foods in your diet so you get maximum benefit from each different type of food. And when you go too extreme in one direction, you don't live as long. So to give an example, these studies saying high protein plant foods make you live longer. Let's look at the protein in plant foods. Beans and lentils, 16 grams per cup. That's a lot of protein, right? Edamame, almost 20 grams a cup. That's like soybeans or dried soybeans. You put in a soup. It's not hard to see, even if you want to be a, a bodybuilder or a professional athlete, or have the higher amount of percent of kill of protein, because in an elderly person with poor absorption and assimilation, we want them to be over one gram of protein per kilogram of body mass. To achieve one gram of protein per kilogram of body mass, we have to increase some higher protein plant foods in the diet, and we have to be design the diet properly to include hemp seeds and broccoli and pumpkin seeds and almonds, in other words, include beans, and nuts and maybe some soybean too in your diet. So it's not hard to push the protein up with plant foods. We don't, but this is the way we live long by not pushing the protein up with animal protein. Now, it's important that we talk about seafood here because we're discussing some of the flaws of the plant-based diet being low in zinc, which is readily absor absorbable from seafood and like oysters and clams are high in zinc, and they're high in DHA and EPA, the substances that we don't get as rich when we eat plants. And the problem with this is that the, the agricultural runoff, meaning more nitrogen dumping in the water, has led to algae grow growth in lakes and in coastal waterways. And we're finding clusters of ALS. That's really serious illness that can be you know, devastatingly tragic where a person is stuck in a wheelchair and their whole body is paralyzed practically. You know, so this ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease is horribly, it's a horrible disease linked to people living around freshwater lakes, eating fish off out of the lake, or people living in near the coastal areas of the United States, like the Ch Chesapeake Bay in, in New England, where people are eating clams and lobsters out of the bay. And we're seeing that this BMAA, this toxin from comes off the cyanobacteria that live off algae, that growing more in the water due to agricultural runoff is very toxic to humans. And the BMAA has contaminated the bivalves and bivalves are clams, oysters, mussels, and scallops. And of course, shellfish too, like crab and lobster. You know, I, when I was younger, I used to think, well, you know, if I'm going to go out on a special occasion and have something I really like and cheat on my diet, I'll have some like lobster or, you know, clams or, or shellfish or whatever, something like that. You know, that would be like my favorite thing to eat. But now I wouldn't touch the stuff because now I know that's the most, the thing that I thought was the biggest treat or the most um, 
you know, a tasty treat once for a special occasion, now I know is, is, is dangerous. Um, and it's probably the worst thing you could possibly eat because these bottom feeders get high concentration of these toxins. And with dumping of the plastic in the ocean, even smaller fish now, like sardines, are, their, their digestive tracts are full of plastic. We used to think, well, fish is like sardines. It's not a predatory fish. It's small. It's not going to concentrate mercury and other toxic metals and BPA. But no, it's worse than that. They're actually worse than eating the bigger fish that have the high mercury now because there's so much plastic in the digestive tract. And when you eat the sardine, you eat the whole digestive tract with the fish. So these, um, so these seafood has become more dangerous 